right now for the half nut I'm going to be using this piece of brass I bought this at an antique store a few years back it was about five inches long I made it into a brass hammer and saved the rest of it it's an inch and a half in diameter in a perfect world I wish it were an inch and three quarter in diameter for the ears of the half nut to be as long as I'd like them to be but something like 20 bucks to order what I really need so I'm going to try making it out of what I have on hand and see if it doesn't work so the basic operation here is to finish both ends clean it up and get it to the final length which is almost exactly one inch then on this end that's a little thicker there will be a 1.75 inch flange and then the rest of it will be turned down to about to a little over 7 eighths that, that will all be done on the three jaw chuck just general turning then I'll put on the four jaw chuck mount it sideways and drill through for the lead screw and then do internal boring for the lead screw uh, threads for the half inch dash 16 Acme threads. Earlier today I made this thread cutting tool, internal thread cutting tool for the half inch dash 16 Acme threads. I made it using the general instructions that Click Spring gives on his channel. Uh, this is water hardening drill rod. You cut the profile of the thread you want to cut and then harden it and then grind away just a little more than half of it. I played some games with it. I made a practice piece to confirm that I could make one and it does in fact work later. So first thing is chuck the thing up in the three jaw face one end get it all cleaned up and then face the other end to exact length pretty basic machining all right having chucked it up faced well I took it to the bandsaw cut it close to length 980 is the finished length that I'm after so having cut it uh, pretty close to length it's now 1.104 it's 11 over. 1.102 so I need to take off 120 yeah I need to take off 120 off of this end so I use my little improvised uh, DRO for that so we'll bring our little DRO down clamp it in place Put it in the magnet, make sure this little countersunk screw is tight so we don't have to wiggle. Alright, and now that's... So uh, what I'll do is I'll touch off and then set the DRO to zero. Alright. Zero. Now we need to take off 120. So I'll take off of 70. Turned about half its diameter down, half its length down to one inch. Flipped it around, rechucked it. So now we'll use the parting tool to put in a square notch here, leaving 0.175 of a uh, flange there and taking the rest of it down to one inch to match. All right. I have used the parting tool to clean it down to this point. This flange is currently measuring about 177. If it's tight, I can always touch it to the belt sander later to fit it in a little bit. Rather be uh, looking at it than looking for it, as Keith Fenner would say. Uh, next is to get this thing mounted up in the four jaw sideways. Having this now in the four jaw. I need to trim this flange down to a total width of one inch wide 
and trim this barrel part down to 7 8 of an inch wide. So begin with this barrel part. I'll touch off with this boring tool and then feed in 63, 64 thousandths of an inch off of this edge. This is one inch, so 64 thousandths off each side should get me into about 8725, which is where I want to be. All right, so there's that. Having fed in 64 thousandths, there's now a nice flat on the part. So now the question becomes, how much do I need to take off of this flange? So I'll get a careful measurement, and then from there I can deduce where to touch off and, and take exactly how much. That looks like that's a clean measurement right there. It's 1491, so doesn't take rocket science to figure out that it's 491. Half of 491. Um, half of... Uh, half of 48 is 24, 24 and a half, so that would be 245 would make 490. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. So we want to take off 245. So the trick here is to figure out where I'm actually going to make contact with this part. Looks like it's going to be about right there. There's the first touch. So move a little to the inside we're taking off 245 I'm gonna start with 15 and see how that goes yeah that looks fine of it is now flat. Now the trick is get this flipped over and chucked back up such that these two sides will be parallel. I'm going to play some games with um, putting a parallel on the vise, perhaps a quarter inch tool bit or something to rest this against so that I get. So I can just fit my smallest parallel in there and work it up hard against there and then all I have to do is make sure that I'm level across this face and I should be all set and I can do that by just looking at the travel of the tool bit alright so this edge needs to come out a bit against that parallel make sure it's still solid I like that. That's it's within a couple thousands. Bring this out to its spot. There's touch off. There's zero. This one we were going in 64 thousands. Yep, I'm out at the flange again. Okay, there we go. Take this in to Take the uh, end till the DRO reads 64, and then come do the outer flange. The offset from the top to the hole, uh, for the threaded hole, is 384. So I set the caliper to 384. I struck a line across here, and then I struck a line in the center. I've just spent some time getting it lined up on both those lines. So now all I have to do is center drill and then the tap drill size for this half dash 16 Acme thread turns out to be 7 16 of an inch. Center drill this, drill it 7 16 and then thread it for 16 threads per inch. Okay, so I have center drilled it, drilled it 7 16 and then board it out another seven or eight thousandths from there to our final size. It's a nice clean straight bore. And now it is time to 
cut the internal threads using the Acme internal thread cutting tool. The thread height on this, the total depth that the tool cutter comes out, should be a half an inch plus ten thousandths. And I think that, it, that that is what I have produced so far. So now we're trying a fit up on the edge. and run a couple of passes. All right, though I have the majority of the material removed in the half nut, I'm not getting a clean fit with the lead screw. I'm not really sure what direction I don't have right, so in order to get it right, I've decided to make a tap. So this is water hardening steel have turned it down to exactly the same dimension I ground a high-speed steel tool bit to the form uh, of an Acme thread 29 degrees uh, with the proper dimension across the tip and we have set up and I'm now cutting the threads on here as though I were cutting this uh, Acme lead screw and of course, when it's done having the threads cut, we will cut the longitudinal slots and taper it and harden it. A little bit. <clears throat> and I fed in five thousandths. Now to know when I have fed in far enough, I'll be using um, thread wires. I measure the original lead screw with thread wires, and then measure this to see how close it is. Alright, for our first uh, measurement, I measured the original and it's about 535 across these three thread wires. On this one, I'm getting about 563. So, we've got a little ways to go. I'll do two more passes and we'll measure again. This will be the final pass. I just measured with the thread wires and we were within five thousandths. And I actually want this to be slightly oversized because I don't want to cut a real tight joint. So there it is. So now the threads are cut to spec. Now I've set up the taper attachment to cut a very strong taper. I'm not even sure what taper, I just know that it's cranked way over towards the limits of what it can cut. I have a carbide cutting tool back in here. I'm gonna give it five thousandths more. All right, there is a nice, fairly sudden taper. A real gentle taper could have been called for if I was making this to thread from scratch, but in this case, I'm just making it to clean up. So we're gonna go with that right there.
And now we have the square shank on the end. Now if you're a real, real machinist, you use a ball end mill and this square collet block in the mill to cut hemispherical shaped grooves. But the truth is all you need is any sharp edge groove. So we're going to use a cutoff wheel. And the collet block just kind of gives us a good idea of where is square. And lastly, we will use a Dremel tool at an angle where I can see what I'm doing and grind a bit of relief. The cutting edge is contacting the part and the rest of it is not contacting. We really kind of only need to do it on the first four or five threads. All right, all we need to do now is harden it. There it is. Yes. So we got to clean the metal up to get it shiny. And then we'll heat it up to light straw. Now I'm using a much lighter flame now because it's easy to overheat this. So by using a much lighter flame, by using a much lighter flame, I can bring the temperature up slowly. And one trick I've seen is that you want to start down here and then work your way up to the tip because the tip is liable to get hotter. So I'm just looking for the metal to change color. First it'll go this light straw color, this kind of this light brown, that apparently equates with about 400 degrees. All right, I'm just beginning to be able to perceive a change in color. Yeah, see that brown color? There it is. And by quenching, it sets it. My tap handle is not large enough, so we're going to have to use a crescent wrench. Shouldn't have too much troubles with guiding it and all that because it already has a hole well established. Do want to give it some cutting fluid just to make the make it clean. I can definitely hear it doing some cutting, but it's not nearly as hard to turn as it would be if this was just a hole. At a certain point, to get a little easier to turn. There it is. There it is. Okay, so now the now the taper part that's actually doing the cutting is about through. And now it's easy to turn. There it is. There is our tapped hole. As it turns out, that's a really nice fit. No rocking, it's, it's free spinning without any perceivable rocking in play. That's just a gorgeous job. All right, so did a little filing to clean up these roots where the uh, circular path of the tool had not cleaned up a square shoulder. These edges were just maybe a few thousandths too thick, so I cleaned those up. So now, it fits and it slides clear. Finally, I left this a little thick on purpose 
So we're a little proud here. That can't be proud at all or it'll be bound in. So I will chuck this thing up and take off another, well, I'll measure it with a depth micrometer. Looks like another four or five thousandths. The next thing is to make sure that it fits clean and flush with the holder. And so I'm checking here and here. I took off about 11 thousandths to get it where this is actually, this surface is actually about two thousandths shallower than this. So that when it bolts in tight, it can still slide without hindrance. So, two more steps to go. Drill and install the pins the proper distance across here and then split it down the center uh, this way and then install the pins and put it all together. The slots in the cam are .642 at their widest point and it's eighth inch pins. The slots are eighth of an inch wide. So 642 minus 125 equals 517. We want to drill two pins in here that are centered and 517 apart. First thing we'll do is mount mount the vise in the part in a way that's going to be square. We have these two square faces and a shoulder. Then we want to find the center from this way and from this way. We're going to use the DRO with this edge finder to find the center. up and set the DRO to zero. Now we go to the other side. DRO, we can see that it went 147 on that. So I'll click into that axis and say one half. So now for that axis, it's now set where if I zero it out, it's going to be on the exact center line. Now we come over here. Time by zero set just that access, not the whole thing. And there's the other. We're now at zero zero on the part. Now, we want eighth inch holes that are 542 apart. So now I'm going to move it half of 542 to 71 half of 542. Just look at my DRO until it reads 271. There's hole number one. Now we go to 271, the other axis. Took the other axis to 271. Okay. 
little quick review of the part at this point. Now all we have to do is split it down the middle. So in order to split it down the center, we're going to use the bandsaw. So I just use the spot drill on center line to drill two tiny spots and then I'll strike across those with a scribe that will give me my line for the center line and just use the bandsaw to cut it. Now, the truth is, as far as precision goes, the perfection of this line is not relevant to the function of the final part. But it's going to look hokey if it if it hasn't been done cleanly. All right, so there are the pins installed. Uh, brass pins, 1 8 inch. I've seen other people make them out of a hardened steel dowel, but I would rather wear out the pin than the cam here in the unit. I've given it a test fit, and it seems like it's all going to work, except that it's not opening up quite wide enough. So, and that's, that's kind of a function of the way that I made it, by turning this round instead of milling it flat. It's hitting right back here, right there. So what I'm going to do is just file a flat edge into here to allow it to open up, oh, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch farther. So I'll open up some channels in the back and then do final assembly. There it is. Open, close. Now we'll see if it works. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I'm pleased. Slides back and forth quietly. Snap it down. And it locks. Nice and snug. Turn the wheel here. And down the track it goes. So there it is. Split nut, aka half nut, on an Atlas Craftsman 618. And thanks for watching. P.S. I ordered a set of change gears for it, too. Look at that. A full set of change gears for an Atlas 618 lathe. You just have to get them out of there. That's coming up next.